There's something to be said about fall. I don't really know what it is about this season, but every time the leaves start to change and the weather just gets that little bit of crisp in the air and you go walking in the leaves or chattering on the trees or down the pathway where you're going, there's just something to say about wrapping yourself in something warm and cozy. And I think that these books I'm going to talk about today do that. Hello everyone! My name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jen, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my fall recommendations video. I did one of these last year, maybe two of these actually. I did like a part one and part two, so if you haven't seen those, go watch them. But this one specifically is going to talk about books that feel like just a complete hug of fall. They wrap you in fall, they just make you feel so lovely. That kind of thing. I have some for everybody. I have Dark Academia. I have Murder Mystery. I have Historical Fiction. I have YA Contemporary. And I have Classics. So, you know, it's just a smorgasbord of all sorts of stuff. I have my coffee with me. And I have my Luke sweater. And I have my pumpkins next to me. We are here for a fall extravaganza. So let's just get started. Let's just start off with some classics for now because they're right here and there's four of them that I want to recommend and then another one that's kind of like an extra uh, but you've probably heard about all of these <laughs> and you've probably been told to read them for the spooky fall season anyways but I thought I would mention them here because I think that they are all very atmospheric in their own different way. So first and foremost Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This just has the most cold, bitter, like rainy aesthetic to it, you know? It just has that complete and utter fall vibe to it, which I love. This is a story about Dr. Frankenstein, who is this young kid who goes to the city, goes to London. He becomes a biology student and then he wants to basically play God and create his own creation. But when he does create the creature, he immediately upon seeing it, disowns it and does not take responsibility for it. And so it is a study about what visually we find monstrous versus what is actually monstrous. It is an incredible story and it is so atmospheric. The next one is one that I've recommended many times on my channel and that is The Picture of Dorian Gray. And it is also a study and a look upon what humans deem moral. And it is a story about greed and just this push and pull between how much visually we as a society, especially back when these classics were written, how much we see bad and evil in appearance versus actually having a really quite evil character who is very beautiful in Dorian Gray because at the beginning of the story Dorian Gray basically sells his soul to this painting of himself and all the bad deeds that Dorian Gray does they age his painting they make his painting more and more decrepit and evil looking while Dorian himself remains eternally 18 and beautiful and it is such incredible story and I love Oscar Wilde's writing but it does have that slight creepy vibe to it but also a little bit of a different London than we see in Frankenstein. It is a little bit more I think it also is based in summertime but it just I don't know what it is about classic books they just have a fall feel to them especially books like this that are quite dark and um, have like a, a study on the mind. Another one quite like these two would be the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That one for sure is also a great choice and it's very short if you're looking for short ones. I've read it and studied it for school and it studies the perception of oneself because Dr. Jekyll is doing experiments on himself to see if he can isolate what is truly evil in mankind and he and that evil part of him is trying to take him over in the body of Mr. Hyde. And Mr. Hyde is this creepy older being who's like curved over and, and disfigured and he just is the embodiment of evil where Dr. Jekyll is this perfect 
clean, upstanding doctor, but they're the same person also. So it's really interesting. And I love the study of humanity and what people see in classic literature. So definitely check those out if you haven't yet. Highly recommend both of those classics and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Should have brought that one up too. It's also very good for this time of year because it's very creepy. Then the next two are both Jane Austen's. We have Northanger Abbey, which is a spooky, spoofy, like, take on the gothic literature. It is funny, it is so socially aware, and it is just so good. <laughs> Uh, but it takes place in an old abbey called Northanger Abbey, and our main character, Catherine, is taken and goes into society for the first time by, like, some family members and some friends, and she ends up, at one point, going to stay at Northanger Abbey with the Tilneys, this family, and her whole time there, she's been reading all this gothic literature, like, the castle of Otranto and the mysteries of Udolpho and she is basically superimposing those experiences and those books into her real life so she sees like mystery and murder everywhere she goes and it's it's like a funny twist on the scary so if you're looking for a classic book that has such a witty like intelligent look at the gothic genre definitely check this one out and the next one is Persuasion by Jane Austen. This is, out of all her other books, the one book that gives me the most fall vibes. This one and a little bit of Mansfield Park. They just have this slower, set back, cool vibe to them. So this one, I think what really gets me is the trip in this to the seaside. And anytime there's a seaside in London, it's always cold and blustery because it's not like a tropical ocean side, right? And in here, they go on like a, they just go on like a little trip or whatever about all the characters. And it just has that soft fall vibe to it that I really like. And this is one of Jane Austen's more serious works, I would say. It is her last finished work that she did in her lifetime, not regarding Sanditon or the Watsons, her other two unfinished works, but this was her last completed novel. And it is just a amalgamation of all of her skills in one book. And I just absolutely love it and it's so lovely and it's a little one compared to like Pride and Prejudice and Maswell Park so definitely pick this up. All right let's just dive into my YA picks and then we have like one sort of adult pick and then we have our historical fiction picks and I'm very excited about it. Then we also have like a little extra section that I asked you guys for your recommendations as to what book feels the most fall to you and I have three to talk about. So that'll be super fun. Uh, but the next book is actually one that was just released by my dear friend Sarah and it is If the Room Fits uh, by Sarah Sutton and this is a very little slice of Halloween and romance and second chances and it is so good. I actually proofread this for her. I was one of her proofreaders and so I got to read it before it was released but I was so excited to get my hands on the copy and it is just so great for this time of fall. It literally from page one feels like you are dunked in Halloween and it's just no matter what, no matter where you are, it's cool, it's crisp, there are leaves tossing around, there's Halloween parties to attend, there's costumes to dress up in, it is so good and like not even to mention that there's a great great romance in here and a great story and absolutely amazing characters. So definitely pick this up if you're looking for something short and that is just like a shot of espresso in Halloween form. <laughs> Now diving into the slightly creepier YA books, I have Stalking Jack the River by Carrie Maniscalco. I absolutely love this book. It's set in London when Jack the Ripper is at large and it just has like this mysterious fall, almost academic air to it because we have our main character, Audrey Rose, and she wants to become like a medical examiner. She wants to be in the medical field. She works with her uncle who is in this field, who like inspects and does autopsies on cadavers and teaches and is a professor of the biological type of thing at this time. And she wants to be part of that. So in this, you get a lot of her working and studying in this field, which is kind of just automatically a little bit gruesome and spooky because you're dealing with dead bodies especially when the Ripper starts happening because they 
are tasked with really finding out what happened to these poor women who have been just completely desecrated by Jack the Ripper. And it is so good. And then there's a really great romance that starts in this and it's just incredible. The next book in the series is set in Dracula's castle which is so cool, but it has such a deep wintry vibe to it. And I haven't yet read the third or fourth, but I'm so excited to keep going with this series. And it just, just this first one has the perfect, perfect fall vibes, in my opinion. Sticking on that same train, we're going further on the fantasy track, and we are going into the witchy, the France-like late, 1500s-esque, I might be wrong with that date, but that is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. This book is so controversial here on YouTube and on the book internet. People love it or hate it. I am in the camp of loving it. I don't think it's a good book by any means, but it was so entertaining. <laughs> And it's, I'm so excited to read Blood and Honey, which is the next one. Uh, but I think that this has the perfect fall vibes, even though I think it's set at a certain point over the winter because it's cold and icy where they are. But it just has like a darker vibe. It has witchy vibes to it. It's set in like a France type place. And it's like a historical type fantasy fiction as well, which is so good. And I just, it was very good. And yeah. I don't really know what else to say about it. It's a witch and a witch hunter who are bound in holy matrimony and all the stuff that happens after that. The next one is actually a book that I just finished last weekend and I'm so glad I got to finish it before this video because I really wanted to include it. That is The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is just so good. It is set in 1920s New York during the time when a serial killer, the Pentacle Killer, is terrorizing the city. People are being found dead, completely desecrated, and like body parts are missing from them. So their heart, their eyes, their hands, their feet, that kind of a thing. Each one of them has a different body part missing. And it also includes these, this huge cast of characters along with a bunch of ki like younger kids, not younger kids, they're like teenage, 20, like early 20s age, who all have these like powers and different things that they can do. And it is just great. The prologue of this, so spooky. I listened to it on the audiobook and I've like read that prologue now three times trying to read this book, but I just, so spooky. Naughty John, all of his chapters in this because we get chapters from the demon serial killer. They are so creepy. By the end of it, my whole body was in full sweats because we're dealing with like a death cult and a demon guy come back from the dead and magic and it's just so good. And I highly recommend you pick this up this time of year because it has just got that fall blanket that wraps around you. It's so good. And it's spooky. Just the gentle bit of spooky. Because if you're like me, I don't really love spooky books a whole lot. This is like just the right amount. And the last book in that kind of same fantasy vein, this is more adults though. We're leaning into the dark academia vein. Now I haven't read a lot of dark academia. I tried to read The Secret History and I could get through it because I just didn't really like it that much. But I know that a lot of people really like dark academia. And this is the first dark academia book that I actually really liked. So I think my brand of dark academia has to be fantasy driven. So like I'm very excited for A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik because that is like Hogwarts but with death stakes. Like if you if you don't pass you die. That kind of thing. Very excited to read that one. But anyways. This is The Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. This is a very very dark fantasy book centered around Yale. So we have Alex Stern who gets basically invited to go to Yale because she has the ability to see ghosts. She's asked to oversee and kind of be part of this organization that oversees secret, the secret societies of Yale and she has a special ability where she can see ghosts at all times. So it has this kind of creepy factor in that alone. And then there's a murder on campus right at the beginning. So it's got murder, it's set at Yale, it has the dark, spooky 
academic vibes to it. We have quite a few triggering subjects in this, so if you really want to read this and you haven't yet, definitely look up the trigger warnings if you need to. There is a scene in here of an attempted rape, child rape, not only. There's murder and there's abuse of like drugs and stuff like that, so definitely check out the trigger warnings if you need to, but it is so dark and it is so atmospheric and it just feels like you're walking through Yale at, during fall where all the trees are like blackened and bare and skeletal and it is a blanket of dead leaves and you're walking alone and it's cold and it's like that sound of crunching leaves under your feet and all you can hear is your breath going. That's what this feels like. All right, so the next two books, arguably one of them is my favorite book in this entire stack. But actually, I have a lot of favorites in this stack, which is so nice, but that's the reason I'm recommending them to you, obviously. Uh, the first one isn't really one that I, uh, most people would probably think of when they think of a fall read, but I'm including it anyways because when I think of it, I think of a fall read, and that is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. This book was such a surprise to me when I read it for a book club this year with my friends. I've had this on my shelves for so long. I think I picked it up originally when the movie came out, which was so long ago, with the purview of reading the book before watching the movie. And I haven't yet to watch the movie, but I've not read it, so that's good. Uh, this is set right after World War II. I, it's set in like January in the spring, but it just has this different, like kind of icy, watery vibe to it which I equate with fall. So it is set between London and the island of Guernsey, and it is so lovely. It's all written in letters, and it's the story of Juliet who gets in contact with the people of Guernsey, and it's the story of the war and hope and loss and grief, and it's just all this stuff and this big community on Guernsey. But it just, it feels so fall-esque because it deals with sad tones of like the war and it has like you're on an island in Guernsey and like I don't know beaches in 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 England as I said before with persuasion it has that same icy on the beach vibes that like just feels like like a November-y vibe to me and this is just so good so good and it wraps you in hope and warmth which is slightly different than wrapping you in fall but I just think that it works for this time of year as well Speaking of like icy beaches in November, I don't actually own this book, but The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stiefvater. If you are looking for a book that bleeds November cold by the beach, read that one. It deals with like demon horses and racing these demon horses, and it is icy and cold in November. And it is so atmospheric and so well written, definitely pick that up. And I know also the Raven Boys at some point, some people say that it feels like fall to them. To me, the Raven Boys feels like summer, uh, which is very strange. But anyways, yeah, also read the Scorpio Races. And the last book that I'm going to recommend for fall, before I get into the three that you guys mentioned, this one was actually the inspiration to this video. When I read it, I read it in August, which was okay, but I wish I had read it this fall because it is the perfect amount of gothic and creepy and fall vibes. And that is The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Satterfield. I have compared it to Jane Eyre and Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo because that is exactly what it is. It is those two books combined. We have old decrepit houses, we have old stories coming being unearthed, we have creepy fall vibes, and I know in here there's like a snowstorm and it goes over Christmas, but it just feels like fall because you're dealing with like books and libraries and literary things and just oh it's so good. But yeah, the the definitely the beginning of this feels like you're being wrapped in a literary hug and then it just moves into this gothic masterpiece. And everybody needs to read this. Please read this. 
I didn't even explain what it was about. Do I need to? I gave you like Jane Eyre meets Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. That's really all you need to know because it's about Margaret who gets a letter one day from this very prolific author who has never ever ever told the truth about her life. She's always made up a story about her childhood and her her life as she goes by and she gets Margaret gets a letter from Vida Winter and Vida Winter is finally going to tell the truth and wants Margaret to write her biography. And so Margaret goes and visits her at her place and Vida is very ill. She's getting progressively worse if that's why she's telling the story. She's going to die soon and she wants somebody to know the truth about um, Angelfield House and the family that once lived there. And so it's so good. And there's like ghost vibes and creep. It's just so good, you guys. Please read this. When I came up with this idea on Instagram, I asked you guys whether like any books that you guys felt were very fall-esque. And some of the ones that I mentioned today did come up, but three others actually popped up as well that I, I have read one of them and I don't really agree that it has fall vibes. It's very weird. I have, I feel like it's more summer vibes, but that it's also been a while since I've read it. And the other two I haven't yet read. So I'm gonna talk about them now. So the first one is a classic and that is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, which makes so much sense because it is a Jane Eyre retelling. And I've already talked about Jane Eyre type books in this video. And I should have included Jane Eyre on this list because that is like just the most fall vibe book I've read, but it's fun. I've recommended Jane Eyre so many times. Anyways, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I am currently three chapters into this and I am very excited to keep going with it, but everyone who commented on that thing, a few people said Rebecca has the most fall vibes because it gets really gothic and creepy by the end of it, so very excited to keep reading this. And if you guys are looking for a slightly newer classic, this would work. And the one that I have read but don't quite agree with, I feel like this has more summer vibes than anything, which is so weird because it is set at a school during the fall time. Which doesn't make any sense to me why it feels summery, but it does. And that is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. So this is set at a boarding school and there's murders. And we have uh, Stevie Bell who wants to solve these murders. And it is compared on the back to an Agatha Christie-like ecosystem, which is kind of cool, Agatha Christie. I've only read the first one and I know people absolutely adored this trilogy and that Maureen Johnson is coming out with a second like additional story with for Stevie Bell as well very soon. So I might have to re-pick this one back up and read the next ones very soon. And the last one is one that I, when I look at it, I think fall. I have yet to read it. I think I got 40% of the way through once on the audiobook and decided to put it down. But this is a standalone fantasy that centers around Faye and a girl who accidentally paints emotion into a fairy's eyes. And that is An Enchantment of Ravens. And just this cover alone has the most fall vibes to it. Like, I just... Oh, it's so beautiful. I love it. But yes, so that's An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This is apparently just oozes and breathes fall. We've come to the end. We're getting to the end of it all. I hope that you found at least one book that you've added to your fall TBR through this video because these are all great picks. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in another video soon. Stay kind and keep on reading.